Okay, I think it's set up. Do we have any agenda items for this instance? All right, I see CDI issue triage. Any other items from anyone today? All right, we can get started on looking at that first issue. So I'm going to open that. All right, does anyone have some context and wants to introduce this issue? It looks like we don't have any comments so far. Okay, this is related to disconnected cluster data import crons, and I don't see our non here who I would ask. Let's see. Can't remember if we support disconnected environments uh, with regards to data import crons or not. I recall there was a Jira about it, but I don't know where where when it made it in. Okay. Yeah, no, we, we support that scenario. Okay. Um this is four fourteen. And then here's the CDI version looking pretty old. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not the correct CI version. If they're running OK B414. OK. Mm, OK. Yeah, so I just wonder if there's like a, a custom installation here or something like that. And the reporter is named. It, it could be that they haven't correctly configured their CA uh, certificate for their, although the error message is somewhat unclear on what actually is going on. Um, how should I word that? Like, make sure. Uh, all right. I'm I'm just looking at the entire error message here, and it looks like they're trying to actually connect to Quay IO instead of their custom registry. Um. Oh yeah. Make sure that you have. So I I think there's two things that they can potentially do A is make the wrong data import cron that points to their registry. Or two, I think OKD has a mechanism where they can override um, the registry to be their mirror for okay. all the requests. I just don't know off the top of my head uh, what that mechanism is, but I'm pretty sure it's there. 
Okay, I'm going to keep it more generic here with this so far then, just making sure that it's configured to point to the correct registry. All right, I think that one's good. That was 3367. So there's one more above that. Yeah, with this one, there's quite the discussion. Um, so at first we thought that this is a legit use case where you want to do like a selector binding selector based binding between a PVC and a PV. Mm -hmm. But then when I uh, started, you know, like trying to use it myself to verify the PR, I was like, I was seeing that this is like not something you should be doing. Like you just get rejected on the provisioner level. So mm -hmm. uh, Alexander suggested the uh, author here to just use wait for first consumer and use node selectors or whatever on the VM, you know, like the proper way to achieve uh, binding to a specific node. Mm -hmm. And it looked on the PR, this person looked like uh, they agree that they're uh, going to give it a try. So uh, for now, I'd say it's a, it's a hold on them. Yeah, I don't see the question from, uh, where was that discussion from Alexander? Is that in the PR? Yeah, it's in the PR, yeah. Okay. That's, uh... Do we want to do something about this ancient dock or is it okay for historical purposes? Well, the, the document is sort of explaining how to set up um, local storage without a storage class. Okay. I'll think of other options. So what needs to have, is this uh, PR going to get closed? I yeah. think so. I don't think it's a use case. Like uh, the okay. really right way to do this is uh, wait for first consumer and you know, just let the, the pod or the VM figure out where the GPU is and schedule according to that. Okay. All right. Do we want to put a a com like a sum summary comment here then? Yeah, sure. I can do that. Or maybe put it on the issue instead. Yeah, I went back to the issue. Yeah, just because I think that we have that PR attached, and the so the conversation's kind of one step removed from the issue. So if we summarize what we expect and then uh, the reporter was going to take a look at other options, so we could say, you know, have you found another option that works for you um, just to kind of end up getting this closed. I'll let you make the comment, Alex, just because I think you'll do a better job uh, with specifics on this, on the summary there. If you don't mind. Yeah, I'll do that. Thanks. All right, so I'm gonna close this one and then that ended up being at the top of the list. Do you guys want to take a look together at any other issues? Anything that's worth discussing? If not, I'm going to come back here and check any other 
um, topics for discussion here. Last call before we would close the meeting out. Um, just a random thought here. We're on every other week. Mm -hmm. We don't seem to get a lot of things to discuss. Maybe do it every three weeks instead. Just so there's a little more time to accumulate stuff. I'm just going to note this, the, that it came up. However, I think this is a summer thing uh, because in other times of the year, uh, we have enough topics uh, each two weeks. So I'm confident that maybe in next month it will be better. Yeah, I also like um, a regular cadence just so that we can have something like this is it's kind of like office hours in a way. Um, do you guys, for those of you who attend the main convert community meeting, um, to what extent are storage topics represented within the agenda there? Because um, I guess we did originally create this because we wanted to create a, a place where people with specific storage topics could spend a little bit more time. I also do think that the CDI issue triage is a valid, uh, valuable touch point here. Um, so just wondering, do we get some good storage conversations over there? Um, I'm, I'm certain we're not uh, overwhelming that meeting with too many topics. So I don't recall that we go deep into storage uh, discussions in that meeting, but we do triage them, specifically the Qbert issues related to storage. So we kind of uh, represent ourselves there, take the issues and work on them uh, offline. But nothing, I think, that's uh, not like deep discussions, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind popping on here, um, uh, making space for it. You know, I mean, I guess we all have uh, busy calendars, but if it turns out we don't have uh, agendas or agenda items at this time, it, I don't consider it to be too harmful to cancel this. So and my vote would be that we keep it where it is and observe uh you know, if uh, if we need to do something, I would be more a th three week schedule is a little bit uh, strange for me. I would rather do something just because it's hard to know, like it's a little harder to predict when the next meeting will be uh, as opposed to trying something like the the first and third weeks of the, the or, yeah first and third Mondays of of the month or some other kind of schedule. So we could explore s some other options. Um, or doing the, yeah, like the first, if we were going to go monthly or something like that, just to kind of, I think that would be the next, uh, the next notch that's easier to follow would be a, a monthly meeting. Uh, but in that case, that's half the amount of, uh, opportunities here. So that seems a bit drastic. Um, so I'm hoping that we'll, maybe we're just experiencing a little bit of a lull or, Either that or storage is working so well, there's just no topics, but we all know that's not necessarily true. There's always stuff to discuss. So um, another thing that uh, those of us in the community can do is uh, direct people to this call for uh, an opportunity to meet with us too when you see people that um, maybe have a, a bigger topic. So um, is that all right, just to decide to keep it where it is for now? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. I, I just suggested it since, you know, for the last couple of meetings, we really had no agenda or anything. So, yep. Okay. All right. So, um, last call, I guess, for topics. Uh, anything else that anybody would want to point out here?
going once, going twice. All right, with that, I think we are good to adjourn for the day. So thanks all for joining and we'll catch you at the next one. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.